G'day everybody, Daniel here from GI Energy. Today I'm talking to you about energy bills and explaining all the charges on there and how solar and battery will actually save you money. So firstly, I'm gonna go through a traditional retailer's bill. Um, most of them look fairly similar. And then after that, I'm gonna go through a VPP bill from Amber Electric. So there's basically two sections to this video. You can flick between them. Obviously we'll put some chapters there in the description to save you watching if you're not interested in that sp specific part. So firstly, we're gonna start with a traditional retailer. What I mean by traditional retailer is just an everyday retailer that bills you for your energy that you use. There's no VPP or special rates for free energy during the day or anything like that with these. This is just your basic traditional retailer. So this is one of my old power bills before I shifted to a VPP that we're gonna pull up on screen and go through. Front page of the bill typically just talks you through, um, obviously your own details and account numbers and things like that. So firstly, what I'll do is just explain what the charges look like on the bill, and then I'll explain how you can offset them with solar and battery. So this bill here shows my, um, it's called the solar max tariff, uh, and the peak consumption there is the first line item and it shows it there at 2,473.532 kilowatt hours used. That's your volume charge as such. So that's how, many, how much volume of electricity you've used. Um, my charge rate there was 28 cents with all the other decimals plus GST basically. So um, my cost of electricity was $713.63. Then you've got your supply charge. A supply charge is basically the charge to supply energy to your home. That includes the network fees for maintaining, installing lines and all the other infrastructure required to carry electricity from wherever it's coming from into your home. So my cost there on this particular bill was $1.19 per day, and that was over 90 days, so that was $107. Then you've got your demand. Now this is where some people get a little bit confused. It's a newer fee. It might not be on every bill, but it is on most of them now. The demand charge is basically a reading of how much energy you've used in one short burst, basically. Um, so if you look at the first one there, for December, I used 13.25 kilowatts in one go. Notice the difference there between kilowatts and kilowatt hours. So your volume charge for the peak consumption at the top is measured in kilowatt hours. So to put that into some kind of perspective, that basically means if you had a microwave, for example, that was a thousand watts, that's a one kilowatt microwave. If you had that on for a full hour, it would draw one kilowatt hour of energy. But because it's a consistent load, it would draw one kilowatts in relation to that demand period. So I had quite a lot of stuff turned on there to draw 13.25 kilowatts at one go. I may have had an oven, probably a pool pump, air conditioning, and a bunch of other stuff that totaled 13.25 kilowatts demand. What happens there is you get charged a fee, as you can see there, is 15 cents basically per day for that 13.25 kilowatts across that month. So each month I've got a demand and that's obviously then that 13.25 is replicated across every day of that month. So equated to 62.41 for December, the first till the 31st. And then the next one down January 1st to 31st of January was $41. And the last one on this bill was 39. So you can see there, that's about $140 roughly um, of additional costs just for my demand. Now, those are the main charges on your bill. And in terms of how solar energy is gonna save those, when you put a solar system on your roof, it might be a 10 kilowatt solar system. And that 10 kilowatt solar system is likely to produce around 40 kilowatt hours per day, obviously depending on where you are in the country. For the sake of round numbers for this explainer, let's say it produces 40 kilowatt hours. That 40 kilowatt hours is gonna be produced during sunlight hours and predominantly from about nine to three. In the, um, obviously you will produce energy leading up to nine o'clock, but the peak solar production hours are basically nine to three. Um, your solar system will start working immediately as soon as the sun hits the panels, just with a few watts building up and up and up. And then eventually it will max out close to what the inverter capacity is during the middle of the day. So you, because you're producing a total of around 40 kilowatt hours, across a day with that solar system, you're able to offset as much energy as you can concentrate into the window that it's producing. So let's say my average um, on this bill, which if we look at the chart on the bottom, it will tell me that. Um, so my average uh, kilowatt hour daily use on this account was 27. That's obviously across a 24 hour period. 
So I may have used, let's say, somewhere in the ballpark of half of those during solar hours. So I could have offset those 13 kilowatt hours quite comfortably with my solar system. Then obviously you've got the remaining amount, which if you don't have a battery and after the sunset, you're still using energy, you would have to pay for. So during the day when I'm producing way more energy than I'm actually using, if I don't have a battery, I'm selling it back into the grid. And if you go back to the charges on this bill, you can see there the solar export charges. I'd actually exported quite a lot back to the grid. Um, they're only paying me 10 cents per kilowatt hour and I'd sold back 684.476 kilowatt hours to give me a small credit of $68.45 on that bill. At night time, if I didn't have a battery, I would be paying for the remainder of that energy. Now on this bill, I did actually have a battery. It was a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall. This bill was obviously bang in the middle of summer. So it's still a lot of money. It's the highest bill I've ever had at that home. So even with a 13, um, nearly 14 kilowatt solar system and a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery, I still had a significant bill. That's because the aircon was cranking, the pool pumps were on, um, and we had lots of other things going on throughout that period as well. So in summary, your solar system is gonna save you your kilowatt hour charges, um, but it won't really save you your overnight stuff unless you've got a battery installed. So it can save daytime power. You can concentrate as much of your energy into that daytime window as possible, meaning your savings are higher, but only when you install a battery can you save money overnight. Now the demand charges are different again. So depending on when that peak demand is, your solar energy may or may not help with that if it doesn't have a battery. If it does have a battery, obviously you've got more like a 24 hour system in place with energy coming from solar or battery, so you're more likely to reduce it. That being said, with my battery, I still managed to use 13.25 kilowatts demand in December. Um, I assumed that was probably on a day that was either overcast or it was later at night and I was using a lot of energy because we had people over potentially. Um, as I said, the air cons would have been cranking and a bunch of other stuff was probably turned on. So even with the battery there, supplying a good amount of power, I still managed to use 13 kilowatts on top of that. So your solar alone won't necessarily reduce those demand charges because they're most likely after dark. For most people come home, that's when things get turned on. So it's your battery that will save you those demand charges. I think that basically sums it up. You've obviously got your three main charges, your volume charges, which is your kilowatt hour charges, your demand charges, and your fixed costs. In order to offset those fixed costs, you would need to sell quite a lot of energy back to the grid at that low rate of 10 cents in order to build up enough credits to offset that $107 that I was charged as a fixed fee. So this, as I say, was my highest bill by a long, long way. It would have been significantly higher without any solar or battery. Um, and after this period, not too long after, um, into the following year, I installed a, another battery and I moved to a VPP. So what I'll do now is I'll pull up my first bill with my VPP. It's not a like for like comparison in terms of time of year. This was an August bill. Um, it's from Amber Electric and they are a VPP, which means that you have access to live wholesale rates with Amber. So if the wholesale rate to purchase electricity is three cents, that's what you pay. If it's three dollars, that's what you pay. Typically, the cost of energy is very cheap during the day and expensive during peak periods from about 4 till about 10 p.m. So without a battery, it doesn't really make sense because your solar obviously is tapering off at 4.30 and that's when the rates are spiking up. So without a battery, you'd be subject to those rates. With a battery though, if you've got a big enough battery to cover you through those peak periods in the evening and then again in the morning when it's expensive again, you can export your energy at a higher rate during those peak times. So for me, I'm storing energy during the day. I'm using it through my battery, which is now bigger at nighttime. I'm not paying those peak rates and I'm also exporting energy back when it's more valuable than it was with my previous retailer. So as I say, this is not a like for like bill, but you can see how drastically different it is after installing the next battery. So $17.48 was with the VPP. And again, the front page is just all the details. And the second one is where the costs are broken down. So with Amber, because it is a dynamic pricing model in terms of them just charging you whatever the wholesale rate is, there's no fees there from Amber in terms of a margin or markup. So 
If the rate is three cents, that's what you pay. If it's three dollars, that's what you pay. Mine tends to fluctuate from zero dollars in the middle of the day um, all the way up to I've seen it as high as sort of 40 cents to purchase energy. You do get price spikes typically in the summer when the grid's under more strain where it's into the dollars per kilowatt hour. But as I say, that's when your battery should see you through and also when you can then sell it back at a higher rate. So on the back of this bill, it gives me my billing period and it shows me there what my charges, credits and bill amount were. Amber are charging me only 96 cents a day, whereas my previous retailer was obviously a bit more than that. My usage there from the grid was only 205 kilowatt hours, obviously a lot less because firstly the time of year, but also because we've got double the size battery. My average buy rate was only 10.95 cents, much better than on my previous bill where it was nearly 30 cents. Then we've got your supply charge at 96, and then you've got your Amber fees at $21.19. That's all plus GST. Charge from Amber is actually 25, including GST. So you'd wanna make sure you were getting at least a $25 benefit in order to make that worthwhile. My solar exports were worth just under 14 cents, a little bit better than 10 cents. And again, in the summer, when you get those price bikes, I anticipate they'll be a lot higher. Scrolling down onto the next page, you've got your detailed bill. So this just gives you a breakdown of what those costs are made up of. You can see there that there's carbon neutral offsets, environmental certificates, market charges, network charges, and all that stuff there just gives you a breakdown of what actually makes up that cost per kilowatt hour. And then obviously, if you go down a bit further, you've got the breakdown of the network supply charge and the Amber fee. So for me, the VPP has obviously worked out a lot better. Doesn't for everybody. There are other VPPs as well. I just happen to be with Amber because it works out best for me. There's also time-based tariffs, which we've done videos on. You can see on our channel where you get free energy for a certain period of time during the day. You can then obviously use that in the home. You can use it to charge a battery. And then when it's more expensive at nighttime, you can discharge your battery. Having been charged either with solar or free energy, it's obviously very economical to do it that way. So. There's a lot to condense into this video. I've tried to keep it fairly concise so it's not an hour long and really boring, but everybody has a different bill and they do all look a little bit different in terms of the way that they're laid out. So please, if you have any questions, chuck them in the comments. We'd be happy to help if we can. If we've missed anything or if there's another video that needs doing, we'll do that as well. Ultimately, we just wanna be helpful and help people understand how solar and battery can work for them. So um, yeah, if you've got any questions, please hit us up and we'll do our best to answer them for you. Thank you very much for watching.